The basic theory of forming bonds is called the molecular orbital theory. The molecular orbital theory is based on uh, a very simple concept. It sort of starts with Lewis bonding theory, which says that valence electrons are shared in space to form covalent bonds. In the quantum mechanics theory, valence electrons have particular exact energies and they are restricted to certain exact areas of space. And we know what those areas of space are because we use math functions to sort of plot their shapes as atomic orbitals. Since the electrons have the shape of atomic orbitals and we need to use those electrons to make bonds, what we can do is use the orbital math to plot the shape and energy of a bond. In other words, you can only make a bond with areas of space that have electrons and you can't make a bond in areas of space that don't. So on a simple qualitative level, what the scientists theorized was that electrons would become shared in covalent bonds when the clouds that are defined by atomic orbitals move close enough that they essentially collide and interact. And that region where they're colliding and interacting is called, a, called the overlap region. So the orbitals overlap. When they do that, the electron in each orbital will have the ability to sort of move across into the other orbital. In other words, the cloud will sort of expand to cover both atoms. And the cloud, if we started with one electron, on one atom and one electron on the other atom, the cloud would expand. It would be two electrons, one from each atom, but it would be spread over both atoms, and that would define a bond. So what we're going to do in the molecular orbital theory is we're first going to define orbitals. We're going to have those orbitals describe specific electrons. We're going to bring those orbitals together in space in their XYZ coordinates, overlap them, and then we're going to calculate a new a molecular orbital function. Now, one important part of this then is in the molecular orbit theory, orbitals which can't overlap won't form covalent bonds. Okay, so how do we specifically form a molecular orbital? Well, we're not going to be required to do the math for this. It's already been done for it. And what we can do is basically more or less use the pictures that we get from the math. But you have to understand that the pictures really are representations of specific mathematical functions and specific types of calculations. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine the individual atomic psi functions and make a new wave function that describes how the electrons would move over more than one atom. We call that a molecular orbital. Okay, so we're combining functions in order to make a new function. Now, the new wave functions describe new orbitals, and those new orbitals, those molecular orbitals, have the following properties. They extend over two, or in some cases, even more atoms simultaneously. If they extend over more than two atoms, we have resonance. They have a specific energy, just like the atomic orbitals, and they can hold a maximum of two electrons, just like atomic orbitals. Now, it takes at least two atomic orbitals to form a molecular orbital. The two original atomic orbitals, in theory, could hold a total of four electrons, right? Because each atomic orbital can describe or hold two electrons. So when we take two atomic orbitals, we're taking the holding power of four electrons. Now, if we take those orbitals, we combine them together, so we destroy the original atomic orbitals, and we make a molecular orbital, if we take two atomic orbitals, 
destroy them, make only one molecular orbital, now we've gone from being able to hold four electrons to being able to hold only two electrons. So it turns out for the math to work, when we take atomic orbitals, destroy them, combining them together, making molecular orbitals, we have to make the same molecular orbitals at the end as we started with atomic orbitals at the beginning. This is going to become very important when we go to the valence bond theory down below. For simple pairs of atomic orbitals, the new molecular orbitals can be made really easily by just adding and subtracting the wave functions of the atomic orbitals. Now, adding the two uh, elect atomic orbitals is sometimes referred to as overlapping the orbitals in phase. We call that that because in because the orbitals basically define waves and when the lobes of the or the parts of the orbital that are overlapped both have positive numbers makes the wave bigger so that turns out that we call that in phase when we do wave physics. So let's show an example of this. So look down here. What I'm going to do is first show you what I'm talking about in terms of adding and subtracting functions. This is something that I learned, I think, in Algebra 2. We had a function, f of x. f of x was just a function that we plugged in x, we got a number out. Now we could say that, that we could write an expression that described that function, x squared plus 3x plus whatever, okay, and that would be fine. But we could also just write f of x and understand that there was some expression associated with that. That's what we're doing in our quantum mechanics map. We could also have a different function that we could call g of x. And again, it would have an expression, might be the same expression, might be a different expression. Okay. But what we could then imagine was taking f of x and adding it to g of x. And what that would do is that would create a new function that we might call q. Well, if we wanted to know what the number was for q, we would plug in x, we would take that x, we would plug it into f of x, and we would plug it into g of x, add those two numbers together, that would give us the number for q. Similarly, we could say f of x minus g of x. So again, we would make a function called r, we would plug in x, we'd take that x, we'd plug it into f of x, we would get a positive number, we would plug it into g of x, get a number, we would subtract the number that we got from g of x from f of x, that would give us our new number. So this is an abstraction of the actual mathematics. We're not actually having to plug in and, and generate the actual expressions and the actual numbers. We're just conceptually thinking about how it would work. So, if we look at the psi 1s function, the psi 1s function gives all positive numbers in its sphere. In other words, every x, y, z that we plug in here gives positive numbers. Now, what we're going to do actually is sort of imagine just a plane. So, really, we would only be plugging in x and y, and z would be a constant. So, in that case, we would have a whole bunch of positive numbers here. We would have another psi function for this location in space. It would have a bunch of positive numbers. And then what we do is we would imagine moving these nuclei together so that the x, y, z locations would change, but we would use basically some coordinate axis that took it, uh, that into account. We would then basically plug in an xyz coordinate, we'd get a number for the first 1s function, we'd get a number for the second 1s function, we would add those together, that would give us a new number. In other words, these two functions would be like f of x and g of x, and we would get a new function 
out of that called q of x. Every time we plugged in a number into q, we would just substitute it into these, get their numbers, add them together, there's our number for q. Now, what we would see then is that in this region where the left psi function and the right psi function both give a number that's positive and non-zero, those numbers would add up to be a bigger number. Now remember that the size of the number is related to the probability of finding the electron. So in this new function, what we would see is there would be a much higher probability of finding the electron in between the two atoms. We call that the overlap region. So in the overlap region, the numbers would get bigger because we would be adding a positive number to a positive number. That would give us a bigger positive number. We call this reinforcement. Now, the interesting thing then is to think about that that is more or less kind of a picture of how we imagine a covalent bond. We imagine the two electrons being shared in the space between the two atoms. So if the density is higher here, that means that the electrons are largely concentrated in this area of space. Okay, so then the other thing is that we created a new psi function. We have to give it a name. So we call this psi function sigma. That's the Greek letter sigma. And we call this a sigma bond. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the properties of sigma bonds in, uh, a little bit later. Now, we want to do the same thing to make our second molecular orbital. To make the second molecular orbital, what we are going to do is subtract. All right. So first of all, subtracting these is sometimes referred to as out of phase overlap. This is when the, the orbital lobes, the plots that we have, the numbers inside of them have opposite mathematical signs. So if we do this, what we would do basically, I'm going to show you down here. I sort of have it upside down on my thing. We would start again with psi 1s. It would have one electron in it. We would then subtract the other psi 1s. Now, the interesting thing about this, and the kind of important thing to understand, is that actually, when I do math, I don't like to do subtraction. What I prefer to do is add negative 1 times the other variable. So when I put a minus sign here, it's really the same thing as saying plus negative 1 times this function. The reason why that's important is that if you have a function that gives all positive numbers, when you multiply that function times negative 1, all you're really doing is multiplying each of the numbers it gives by negative 1, which makes the positive numbers into negative numbers of the exact same magnitude. So if it's a positive 2, it becomes a negative 2, and so forth. So what we have then here is a region of space where our plot has all positive numbers, a region of space where our plot has all negative numbers. When we bring those regions together, in the overlap region, what we see then is we're going to get a positive number from one orbital, from one wave function, we're going to add that to a negative number from the other wave function. And what's going to happen is the resulting number is going to get smaller. It's going to approach zero. This is what we mean by out of phase. We call this destructive overlap. In fact, there will be portions of this corresponding plot where the numbers get so small that they effectively become zero. That's going to create a portion of the orbital where there is zero electron density. In other words, there's zero probability of finding the electron in that part of space. And we call that a node. So in our uh, molecular orbital, when we subtract them, we create a node. Remember that a node exists in the space where we go from positive numbers on this side of the molecular orbital crossing through zero to negative numbers on that one. Now we call this a psi function, we call it sigma star. 
The reason why we call it sigma star is that when we look at the orbital, there's a couple things that are going on. The first is that this is the exact opposite of the way we think of a covalent bond, because we think of a covalent bond as having two electrons sort of largely focused in the area between the two atomic nuclei. In this one, what we see is between the two atomic nuclei, there is a very low concentration of electrons. The, the cloud has a very low density. So that's the opposite of a bond. In fact, the electrons are mostly focused out on the outside on each individual atom, which is against bonding. The second thing that we find is that when we do in-phase overlap and we get a psi sigma, that psi sigma has a different energy from the two starting sigma, uh, sorry, psi 1s's. Because there's a different shape. And remember I said when you make a different shape, it has a different energy. That energy for the uh, for the constructive overlap, okay, for the in-phase overlap, that energy generally goes down. In other words, the electrons are more stable when they're in this orbital than they're in the two individual orbitals. In contrast, when we do out-of-phase overlap, the energy of the resulting wave function, those electrons go up in energy. And it turns out that that is going to be then causing them to not want to form a bond.